Hello students. Welcome to my another online session. Today we would be learning about the cuisine of Kashmir. I'm Chef Aditya Saxena from Chitkara School of Hospitality. So in today's class we would, would be learning about the geographical location, historical background, seasonal availability, special equipments, special ingredients, what is a staple diet, and the special food of festivals and occasions of Kashmir. Now if we talk about the geographical location, the neighboring states influence Kashmir a lot. The neighboring state likely Punjab. The Punjab was a princely state. Now it has been, uh, you know, a state run by a government. Eating habits of Punjab has a lot of, you know, influence in Kashmir. Uh, as we all know, the Kashmir is located in the north of India, so it has got a lot of mountain ranges. Now, Himalayan ranges run through the northwest to the southeast of Kashmir, which makes the capital Srinagar a uh, valley. Now, Kashmir is being further divided into uh, two union territories, namely Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir. Now, the climate uh, is varied. It is cold. Kashmir has a lot of greenery, whereas Ladakh is, you know, a cold desert. The monsoons are unpredictable, and you know, it snows for almost four months in a year in Kashmir, which make it, you know, uh, inhospitable terrain for those four months. So uh, the food and eating habit has been changed by Kashmir as per the climatic condition. Because Kashmir is quite beautiful with a lot of mountains and greenery and a lot of waterfalls, rivers, so uh, there is a large influx of tourists that uh, they all visit Kashmir often, and which generate a lot of uh, you know uh, income for the people in Kashmir. Now to talk about the historical background, you know the isolated geography uh, with unique traditional culture. Uh, Historically, Kashmir, uh, the last hundred kings of Kashmir were of Hindu origin and the most famous one and the forgotten one, uh, uh, the king of Kashmir was uh, King Lalit Aditya. Now, he was the one who ruled Tibet in North East, in North East and his, uh, you know, uh, Kingdom's boundary was started from Bengal in the west east, Tibet in the northeast, in the north it was almost touching around the European Empire. If the European uh, continent on the west it was still Persia, and in the south it was still uh, Madhya uh, Pradesh. And in its capital was Srinagar. Then uh, when the fall of the dynasty was there, then they, uh, they were uh, the Muslim rulers that came there. Then uh, those were those rulers were invaded by Mughals, which led to the rise of Islam. And major cultural change was there in uh, JMK, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, we further, if we divide Jammu and Kashmir, Jammu is being dominated by Buddhists and Hindus, and houses a large number of temples, whereas Kashmir is dominated by Muslims. And the Srinagar is again a dominated place by Muslim. Srinagar is a valley. Now, uh, the gastronomy of uh, Kashmir is enriched by various cultures and people. All the cultures, the Hindu kings, the Mughals, and the, you know, the Buddhists, they had their uh, eating habit and gastronomy uh, has been, you know, it is a cultural melange of gastronomy in Kashmir. We talk about the season availability as the season uh, is cold, majorly cold. Uh, so there are different fruits that grow in uh, Kashmir. There is abundance of nuts and dry fruits, although Kashmir is also famous for uh, walnut and uh, they grow in abundance over there. As the season changes and you know uh, the snow pins in, and they start playing its part. So the uh, you know, pickled and dried vegetables and fruits started 
come into the guest economy and people used to start eating those things. Now, if you talk about the, you know, the fruits and uh, pickles and dry fruits that go over there, then we have got a lot of apples, we have got almonds, we have got plums, pears, guhab, then we have got pomegranates. These are some of the major uh, fruits and dry fruits that, uh, you know, uh, grow in Kashmir. There are a lot of green vegetables which are, uh, which has been grown in Kashmir. There is Dal Lake and vegetables are grown inside the Dal Lake and as well as on the banks of the lake. And as there is Persian heritage and Mughal heritage, the reflection of eating as genes. So Kashmiris are also majorly rice eaters. They eat a lot of rice, they uh, grow a lot of rice over there. They get their rice from the other parts of the nation also. So they eat a lot of rice in the form of biryanis or plain rice, simple rice or same rice. Now, we are, what, what we are watching is some of the special equipments that uh, play their part in Kashmir. The topmost left is Tarami. It is a big plate. Uh, whenever there is a marriage in Kashmir, people used to sit on the floor and this big plate is placed in between them. And this plate is generally, you know, uh, can uh, hold food for four people. So four people together they would be eating this single plate. Then we have got uh, Goshpar and Karen that is uh, you know, wooden hammer and uh, stone on which things can be uh, you know, beaten up. Then on the right hand side we have got Dekji. Now this is a special thing. Uh, if we see the you know the structure of Dekji the neck of the Ekji is quite narrow whereas the body is quite thick, wide. So whenever the steam is generated, it gets condensed because of the narrow size of neck and goes back in the food. So by this technique, the food retains its flavors, its vitamins and it also retains the moisture. Then we got Kretsch, which is in Hindi we call it Karchi. They got call it Kretsch. It is made of teak wood or it is a wooden one. Then we have got Kharul and Dola, which is, uh, is also known as Oakley in Hindi. Then we have got Samovar. Samovar is a pot in which thing, uh, water or kava or tea could be kept hot for a longer time. Now we would be talking about some of the special ingredients in Kashmiri cuisine. Now climate conductive for growing fruits and vegetables. When there is no uh, snow, the climate is quite good for growing or growing of fruits, vegetables, flowers. In flowers, we got we have got saffron in also. Now they cultivate over floating gardens on lake, which have a very different and sort of a taste. Nadru is one of them. And uh, see the next slide. What we are seeing is. The first thing that we are watching is Nadru, that is known as Lotus Tent, that is being grown abundantly in Kashmir. On the right, we have got shallots, it is also known as Pran. Uh, these shallots are sweet in flavor, they are not uh, you know, uh, you know, a bit hard in flavor. Then there are different dried vegetables which are known as Sangri, they are also known as Hoxun in Kashmir. Then we have got Kachnar flour. These flours are used as tenderizing agents. They are dried and then they are made into a grinding into a powder, fine powder, which act as a tenderizer for the meats. Now, on top left, we can see it's coxcomb flours, or it is also known as bovel. Bovel. Okay. Uh, these flours are generally used to give color in food. We talk about Rogan Josh, the red color of Rogan Josh, uh, it comes from this cox flour. It has been you know, uh, soaked in hot water and it has been then boiled in hot water and it releases the color, red color. That red color water is being used to give color in Rogan Josh. On right hand side we can see is saffron, it is also known as saffron. Now Kashmir is one of the largest producer of saffron, almost 10,000 flowers the 
the strands of saffron in 10,000 flowers make you know around 100 grams of uh, saffron. Then we have got morels or, or it is also known as Gucci. It is a sort of mushroom and it is one of the most second most expensive mushroom in the world. The price of Gucci goes to around 20,000 rupees per kg. It is the second most expensive mushroom after an Italian mushroom which is truffle. Then we have got cholera, which is moinja, it is also known as moinja. It is a vegetable that is mainly locally grown in Kashmir. Then we have got green leaves which are known as hark. Now green leaves and button are both thoroughly and eaten. Then we have got sunchal. Sunchal is also a leafy vegetable that is made, you know, uh, that is grown in Kashmir. Now Kashmir people they generally eat a lot of protein. They have got a lot of protein in their diet. Starting from uh, you know they eat a lot of mutton, they have got a lot of chicken, uh, they have a lot of uh, you know milk diet in their uh, milk in their diet. So they eat a lot of protein in their food. Now if we talk about uh, staple diet, the breakfast are generally uh, tea called kava, or it is also known as sheer chai. Now that has been drunk with the rustic Persian inspired breads. Uh, it could be a bakar khani. Uh, that is made with the chai or camel. Now there are two different styles of cooking in Kashmir. First is Kashmiri Pandit style and second is Kashmiri Muslim style. Now Muslim cooking, uh, use of onion and garlic was there, a lot of extensive use, extensive vazwan and a lot of lamb is eaten. Now vazwan uh, is a, uh, you know, a 36 course menu of Kashmir. Uh, Kashmiri Pandits, they, uh, beef, chicken and pork are prohibited, so they don't eat it, uh, they eat lamb though, uh, use of curd, mustard oil, salt and dried summer vegetables were there in their diet, a uh, lot of green leafy vegetables is eaten during summer because that is the only time they get green uh, leafy uh, vegetables, otherwise in winters they don't get the leafy vegetables that much. Uh, deserts are not that much you know, important for a meal. Now, if we talk about the cuisine of Jammu, it is most of the time similar to the food of Punjab because it was a bordering state. Uh, in fact, Jammu was once a part of Punjab, Punjab Empire. Uh, specialty cuisine for festival and occasions was one, as I told you, it is a special meal made on occasions like wedding, any festival, or any VVVIP guest is coming. Now it has approximately 36 courses. Just imagine French cooking. There are only you know, 17 French classical menu has 17 courses. We have got our fast one which has 36 courses. And it has been cooked by a special cook known as Vaza or Vast Vaza. Uh, now it has been believed in community eating where people sit on the floor and share food. We have seen tarami, where the food has been shared in tarami. A single tarami is placed in between and food is served on it. Now, sheer chai had, had at the end is act like a digestive camera or sheer chai. It will last me pijati and it acts as a digestive. Uh, Navre, uh, a Kashmiri New Year celebration did with rice, walnuts, honey, and curd as this symbolize prosperity and abundance, which is, uh, you know, abund these things are quite, quite abundantly, abundantly available in Kashmir. Now we talk about uh, festival dishes, we have got Rista, which is a lamb dumpling. Uh, it is been cooked in rich red gravy. Then we have got Gustava. Now lamb dumplings in mild yogurt gravy. Again Gustava, uh, when eaten in Vazwan, uh, marks the end of main course. Gustava balls uh, are quite big in size. So after eating Gustava, a uh, person will feel stuffed up and he will not eat any of the more more of a main course. So Gustava is the last course of the main course in Vazwan. Then we have got the Nival Korma, it is lamb stewed in rich yogurt gravy. We have got Tabak Maas, it is a starter. Here the lamb chops are boiled and then they are pan fried. Now if we talk about the boiling of Tabak Maas, again Tabak Maas is boiled thrice. First, it has been boiled in you know uh, normal water to 
take out all the impurities then they are boiled in milk in which all the spices saffron ghee and everything is been added and then they are boiled to the core then they are